All right, so last part of section 6.3 um, looks at graphing multi-step transformations and also a little bit of stuff with the, um, with the calculator. So when we graph multi-step transformations, there's an order we have to follow between the two stretches and the two shifts. Okay. What's the first transformation that we always do when there's more than one in a problem? Horizontal shift. Okay. So first one is always a phase shift, which that's in trig, that's what we call it, but that is your horizontal shift. What's the next thing that we always do after the horizontal shift? Mm -hmm. The horizontal stretch, which we call a... Amplitude? No, that's vertical. Period change. So period change is your horizontal stretch. Now, I said you aren't going to have one, but if the number for the period change was a negative, what would that cause? You'd have a horizontal reflection right in here. So if you had a horizontal reflection, that's where you would do it. But we're not going to have it. Um, what do we do after step Step two, what's after the horizontal stretch? Amplitude change. Yep, that's your vertical stretch. Or actually, I should, if I'm going to write it the same way, I'll say amplitude change, which is the vertical stretch. And the last thing we always do? <coughs> vertical shift, and there really is no special name for that. If you had a reflection, reflections are always done with the stretch. It doesn't really matter if you do it before or after the stretch. I usually do it after. So you could do a reflection here if you had it. You could do a reflection right there if you had it. Just do it right after the stretch. Okay. So that's the order that we, uh, we have to follow. So let's, um, let's just try some examples. So what we're going to end up doing this time is creating two tables. We'll create a table, and we'll do the first transformation, and then we'll use that table to do the second transformation. Okay. So since we're going to be carrying over what we do in one table to another table, possibly to a third table, if we make a mistake in the first table and we keep carrying it over, then the last table is going to end up wrong. So we just have to be careful. Okay, um, what are the two transformations that are happening here? <clears throat> horizontal shift and vertical stretch. Yep, so the two things we have are a phase shift and an amplitude change. Right? Or if you want to say horizontal stretch and vertical stretch, that's what you have. Okay, which one do we do first? The horizontal shift. Yep, do the horizontal shift first, which means for now, which values do not change? Y. The y's. And my y's for sign? Uh, 0, 1, 0, negative 1, 0. For now. All right. Now, original x's, I'm going to put off to the side. 2, 2 pi. Now, what are we going to do to all of those? Subtract. Subtract. Um, yeah. Um, subtract pi over 2. Okay, so you always do the opposite for a phase shift. If it's plus, you do minus. Okay, so minus pi over 2. And we're going to put all our answers in the x column. Okay, my first x is going to be negative pi over 2. Yep, second one? 0. Third? Pi over 2. Fourth? Pi. And fifth. 3 pi over 2. 3 pi over 2. Perfect. Now, if we stopped there, you just did this problem. Sine of x plus pi over 2. Now, we're going to make another table. Um, I think I already asked it, but what's the other transformation? Vertical stretch. It's a vertical stretch. Which column is not going to be affected this time? X. So copy your X's over, but don't copy them from the original table. 
copy them from the table you just made. Negative pi over 2, 0. Pi over 2, pi. 3 pi over 2. Now, what are we going to do to the y values in the first table? Yeah, multiply them all by 2. 0, 2, 0, negative 2, 0. That's your final table. So on a test, what I would be grading is what's in the red box. That's what I'd be looking for. Do you want the black box too, or like just the final? If you need it to get to the final one, you can. But I'm not looking for it. OK. Now we just have to make our sketch. Any questions on that? Now, technically, um, how many transformations did we do to the x column? One. one. How many to the y column? One. one. If you only do one transformation to a column, you can technically do it in any order you want. It doesn't. It doesn't matter. Okay. When you start doing two things to the same column, like multiply and add, or add and multiply, that order makes a difference. All right. So until we do two things to the same column, it really doesn't matter which one you do first. But if you just stick with the order I gave you, then you're never going to have to guess, wait, does it matter, does it not matter? Just stick to the order. All right, so let's, um, let's graph it. Are the x values equally spaced? Yeah, of course. We started with something equally spaced, and we shifted them all left. So they're still equally spaced. All right, so here's negative pi over 2, 0, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2. Um, actually, you know what? I'm going to go by, I'm going to go by 2s. If I had a little bit more space on my grid, I could go by 1s, but I don't. Okay, and now let's um, plot the points. So we're at uh, oops. negative pi over 2, we're at 0. 0, 2, that's my um, y-intercept. Pi over 2, 0. Pi negative 2, and 3 pi over 2, 0. And remember that these are all waves. Whether you're sketching a sine or a cosine, it's a section which is also, what's another name for a section? Period. One full period or cycle. one cycle of the wave. Yep. So in theory, if you needed to graph the next cycle, all you would have to do is repeat what you've already done, just like that. But we are only graphing one cycle per problem. You don't have to graph two. Okay. Okay. Questions on that? All right, so that was a phase shift combined with an amplitude change. Let's look at um, this one. So there's three transformations, which means you are definitely doing two on the same <clears throat> column. So order is now going to be important for at least one of the columns. All right, so we're going to make three tables. What is the first number that I focus on? It's uh, the two on the inside indicating a period change. Yep, the two on the inside. So there's your function that you're graphing. And the two is a what? Period change. Period change. OK. For a period change, which column stays the same? The y. y column. What are my y's for cosine? 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. Cosine? I thought it started with negative 1. No, sorry. No. Uh, cosine starts with 1. 1, okay. 1, 0, negative 1, 0, 1. Okay. Now, <coughs> what are we going to do to all the original x values? Divide them by 2. Yes. <coughs> pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, 2 pi. You're going to divide them all by 2. So the first one? Uh, 0. 0. 
Second one? I over 4. If dividing by 2 is kind of weird, just think of it as multiplying by a half. Same thing. Um, pi becomes? Uh, X is a 2 pi over 4 because that way you can keep all the units the same. Because on you're, my graph it looked kind of weird when I had like pi over 4 and then pi over 2. Yeah, you could, you'll see a pattern if you kept everything with a denominator of 4. 0 pi over 4, 1 pi over 4, 2 pi over 4. I guess it does the same thing. This one? Uh, that's three, three, pi over four. 3 pi over 4 and pi. 4 pi over 4, which is just pi. If you reduce it, that's fine. If you don't, uh, that's fine too. We, I mean, we usually reduce. Okay, so there's transformation. Let's go like this. I'll put a circle so we know which transformation we did first. Okay, um, now the second one is important. What number do we focus on next? The three. There's a big difference between adding one to a number and then tripling it, or tripling it and then adding one. You don't get the same answer. Dependence. So now we're going to deal with the th with um, second transformation. What kind of transformation is the three? It's a what? Yep, amplitude, which is a vertical stretch, and it's going to change which values? The y. In fact, we're done with the x's. X's are always inside parentheses. Y's are always the transformations outside. So we've got 0, pi over 4, pi over 2, 3 pi over 4, pi. And I mean, yeah, could you triple it and add one all in the same step? I mean, yeah, I guess we, we could if we wanted. Um, so if you want to do step 2 and 3 together, that's fine. Just make sure you keep track of the order. Triple and then add one. So if we triple one, we get <coughs> three plus one, four. Triple that, plus one, one. I don't know why I circled it. Um, how about the next one? Negative three plus one. Two. This one we already did was one, and this one we already did was four. So there is your table. So we did transformation two and three at the same time, in the correct order. Any question on that? Okay, let's, uh, let's do our graph. All right, um, for this one, you know what, I think I'm gonna need, I'm just gonna pull one more line up there. So I'm gonna go zero, two, four, I think that'll, that'll do it. And now my x's, those are all 45 degrees apart. That's zero, 45, 90, 135, 180. So we're not skipping anything, I'm just gonna go right in order. So zero, pi over four, pi over two, three pi over four, pi. My axis is a little hard um, to see. I usually try to make it clearer, especially on the homework. But this is my x-axis. This is my y-axis. All right, um, so what do we got? Four, one, negative two. Four, uh, one, negative two. One, four. One, four. Now, should it be, um, is that like an absolute value? Is that what it should look like? No, it should have a curve to it. Anybody remember the name of this point and that point? It did begin with an I, that's all I remember. What is it? I just remember that it began with an I. It did begin with an I, yes. I don't remember what that was called. Inflection point. That's an inflection point. And an inflection point is where the what changes? Curve. The what? Concave. The concavity, yep. It goes from being concave up to then concave down. So the concavity keeps switching. In this one, it switches every 90 degrees, the concavity. Okay. Any uh, questions on that? Convex. Is that what you're supposed to do 
Shift before stretch, shift before stretch. Um, not on the vertical, no. Nope. Vertical shift is always the very last thing you do. You do do a shift before a stretch when it's horizontal, but not when it's vertical. Um, I don't know, does anybody need to see another one of the multi-step? Okay. So, let's look at this one. So, uh, find a complete graph, which means this is a calculated question. They want to find the domain, range, amplitude, and period. Now, a complete graph, I mean, that's kind of arbitrary. I would say if you show two cycles on the screen, three cycles, that's, that's pretty good. Two or three cycles is fine. So, let's say on the test that I said I want a window that does show exactly two cycles. What's another name for a cycle? Period. Yeah. period. If I want two periods, that means I need to know the length of the period. So let's let's find that first. What's what's the formula for um, the two length pi, of the period? Two pi over two pi over two t yes. equals any pressure. Um, so what's the formula for uh, period? Uh, t equals two pi over b, where b is the number in front of x. Yep, two pi over b, where b is the number in front of x. So two pi over three. That is your period for this graph. All right. um, domain, we really shouldn't think about that one too much. Yeah. Domain is always all real numbers for any sine or cosine function. You can plug anything you want in because they are continuous. They are connected. No holes, no asymptotes, no breaks, no steps, nothing. <coughs> Um, the range right. is just four to negative four. <coughs> range. Now, or negative four to four. think about, yeah, the range normally would be negative one to one. But now you've <coughs> done an amplitude change of four, so it's negative four to four. Including or not including? Including. Including, it does reach. Um, domain, range, period, all amplitude. What's the um, what's the amplitude? <clears throat> Four. Absolute value of the number in front. Oops. Okay. So we got everything they want, except we have not graphed it. So if I want to see a window with two cycles, I'm going to go to my window. I'm going to start. I'm going to start at zero. What would my x max be if I want to show two full cycles? Six. Well, how big is one cycle? Oh, it's two pi, so you need to go at least over four, four pi. Four pi over three. Pi. Four pi over three. You can just type it in just like that, it'll figure out the decimal for you. So if you go from zero to four pi over three, you're showing two cycles. Um, the highest and lowest is negative 4 to 4, so let's go like negative 5 to 5, um, and that should be good once we type it in. 4 sine 3x. <coughs> so we're hoping to see exactly two cycles and nothing should go off the screen. So 1, and it's going to end right at the very edge of the screen. So, Again, it looks like every sine function we've always done because I changed the zoom. If I did zoom 7, then you could compare it to um, like how the normal one looks. <coughs> uh, question on that. What's another window besides <coughs> 0 to 4 pi over 3 that would show exactly two cycles? Negative 4 pi over 3 to 0. Yep. You could do negative 4 pi. <laughs> over 3 to 0. So now what you're looking at is the two cycles that are to the left of the um, y-axis. What's, what's another one? 4 
pi over 3 to 8 pi over 3. 4 pi over 3 to 8 pi over 3, 8 pi over 3 to 12 pi over 3, 12 pi. Anything that's 4 pi over 3 apart. Negative 2 pi over 3 to positive 2 pi over 3. That would show you one cycle in the negative, one cycle in the positive. And there's no rule saying you always have to show two cycles. I just, um, I just picked two. All right, um, so find a complete graph of that. Domain range period amplitude. Okay, again, you really should be able to figure out domain range period amplitude without, um, without a sketch. You don't really need that. <laughs> Domains, the same all the time. It doesn't matter how you shift, stretch, flip, whatever you do. If you can plug in any number to start, you can always plug in any number. Yeah? Okay, maybe my calculator's messed up where I intended to do it. And you're in radians? Are you in degrees? I'm in degrees. You can do this in degrees, but you'd have to take 2 pi over 3, and that's um, 60 times to 120. So if you did yours um, 0 to 240, you'd get two cycles. Uh, y max would stay the same. Everything else would be the same. Uh, yeah, so domain. Negative infinity to infinity. Um, range. Negative 3 to 3. Negative 3 to 3. Um, period. One. Oh, yeah, because that's the line I'm thinking of amplitude. Um, Where so. would it be 2 pi? 2 pi, there's no period change in this problem. There's a phase shift, there's a vertical stretch, but you didn't change the period. Um, and I said there's a vertical stretch, so what's the amplitude? 3. 3. There you go. That's everything that they asked for. Okay, let's um, type that in. 3 sine <coughs> x minus 1. Okay, um, I want to show three cycles on the screen. What's a window that would give me? 6 pi. 6 pi. 0 to 6 pi. Sure, 0 to 6 pi. Again, I just picked three cycles. Highest and lowest, eh, negative 5 to 5 is, is fine. But you should see exactly three cycles. And that's three cycles. It's kind of in the middle of cycles because you've done a phase shift by one radian. So you're looking at three cycles, but you're kind of chopping off the cycles in a funny way. That's okay. If you wanted it to begin or end right at a cycle the way we've been sketching, you could adjust your window by one unit in each direction to account for the phase shift. Um, so... Let's see, cosine normally starts at the top and comes, to, yeah, comes, comes down. So if you shifted your window right one unit, I think it would look how we normally sketch. Um, uh, actually, I'm not sure. Let's see. Maybe, maybe not. Oh yeah, no, 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 this is right, because that's how sine normally looks. I was thinking cosine. Yep, that's how sine normally looks. It always starts what it looks like right in the middle. Now I'm showing you three cycles without chopping them off fun. I just adjusted my window by, by the phase shift. You don't, you don't have to do that. Okay. But any questions on that one? Okay. All right, so one of the very first things I showed you guys was a picture of sine and cosine. Just basic sine, basic cosine. And I asked you what the difference was between the two. And most people said, well, it looks like one of them is just kind of slid to the left or to the right, however you want to think about it. And that's all that they are. Sine and cosine are phase shifts of each other by 90 degrees, okay? So, for example, if I take the graph in blue and move it to the left a quarter cycle, move its phase by 90 degrees to the left, um, it would end up right on top of the one in red. So let's try that. 
Let's take the one, I forgot which color it was. Take the one in blue, and I'm going to add pi over 2 to it. And watch what happens. Plus pi divided by 2. Okay, that's a phase shift by 90 degrees. So now there's sine shifted 90 degrees to the left, and there's cosine. Doesn't prove they're exactly the same, but if the pictures look similar, then they probably are the same. Okay. And what I just showed you visually is that first idea. <coughs> if you shift sign a quarter cycle to the left, you get cosine. Likewise, if you shift cosine a quarter cycle to the right, you get sine. So sine and cosine. Pretty much the same thing. So what that means in trig is, if you gave me something in trig, I could type, take anything that you give me and write it with just sine or just cosine. Anything. So we, we practiced a little bit of that like on last week's test. We maybe took like secant divided by tangent, and we simplified it. Right? Well, if I really wanted, I could simplify that to just have sine in it and nothing else. Okay. So sine and cosine are the two most basic um, trig identities you have, or trig functions. All right, so later, I think it's either in this chapter or maybe it's actually next chapter, we're going to spend a lot of time solving equations by hand. Now, a lot of you may or may not know this yet, but if you wanted to get x by itself here, you can't do any kind of arithmetic. It's kind of like trying to get x by itself here. I don't care how much adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing you do, that's never going to get rid of an exponent of 2. What's the operation that you use to get rid of an exponent of 2? Right, that's, a, that's an operation, it's a function. Okay? So, to undo the squaring function, you use the square root function. Well, here you have the sine function. Okay? So to get rid of the sine function, we have to do the inverse of the sine function. Okay? And that is something we haven't talked about yet on the calculator, is right there. That symbol means inverse sine. So, if I was solving this equation myself quickly, I would not bother doing it on a, cal on a graphing calculator. All I would do is say, take the inverse sine of what's on the left. Again, just, just watch this part. That would cancel. Take the inverse sine of what's on the right. And there's my answer. It's the inverse sine of 0 0.4. So I'm going to do that, show you what you get. And now we're going to graph it but it's going to take me five, six times as long to get that same number. Okay? But this is how we graph it on the calculator. Okay? Keep 0.411, keep that in mind. Okay? And also keep in mind the number, again, this is something I'm going to show you guys later. Uh, um, so it's going to be quadrant two, so minus that from pi. Again, you don't know what I just really did there, but just keep those two numbers in mind. 2.73 and 0.411. Right, let's graph it. So we've got sine of x. Just put that in. Probably better to clear it out first. But, and put in 0 0.4. Now, 0.4, when you draw it, what is that going to look like? Straight line. Sine is a wave. How many times is this wave and this line going to cross? It depends on your window, but it would cross an infinite amount of times. They don't want it to cross infinite. They're telling me a certain window. What's my x min here? Zero. And my x max? Two pi. Two pi. There are more answers, but they don't want more answers. They want them between zero and two pi. So now, hit graph. See how much longer this is this is taking. Now I'm gonna find what am I gonna find now? 
intercept. Find the intercept. Remember, I think the first number was 0.411. Just remember that. I'm going to go over here eventually. Enter, enter, enter. And I get 0.411. Now, there's a second answer. And I did a little trick to figure out that second answer. It's not that hard. It involves a little chart and it involves pi, which you're going to learn later on. But I think 2. Point, what was it? 2.73? Yeah. Something like that. Second calc intersect. Go back over here. Uh, it should be close enough. 2.73. So we can get those answers graphing perfectly fine. I think the way I did it without graphing is much faster. But there's a little more you have to know to do it that way. You got to know a little bit about this chart, this ASTC diagram, and then a little bit about a formula with pi. And that's basically what I did. At the time of our okay, let's take a look at this one. Um, I could do the same thing here. If I was going to solve this algebraically, not graphically, um, I would divide each side by two. I would then take the inverse cosine of each side, and then I'd be left with 1 half x equals inverse cosine 0.75, and then I would multiply each side by 2. So I could solve this very, very quick with, with algebra. But we're going to focus on the um, graphing. And sorry, I messed that up. Would not make sense if your minimum was 2 pi and your maximum was 0. Can't do that. Okay. Um, someone tell me, how am I going to solve this one on the calculator? We're going to put what's on the left and y1, and then what's on the right and y2. So 2 cosine 0.5x. All right, so we got that. Um, 1.5. Now, the most number of times that a line and a trig function can cross normally um, would be two. You can't get more than two. You could get one if the line was tangent to the very top of the curve, but you can't get more than two. Now, what is this one half going to do? Stretch it or compress it? Stretch it. It's going to stretch it. So now what you've done is you've stretched the wave out. So you may only get a line hitting once now because the wave is a lot bigger. Right? If you compress the wave, then you might get more. But if you stretch it, you might get less in the same size window. That's what we're talking about. Okay, so let's, um, let's see what happens. 0 to 2 pi, we're good. Yeah, we're only going to get one. It's going to be in the early part. The wave has been stretched out so much, there's not enough time for it to get to the second one. <coughs> so, second calc intersect, and we get about 1.45. Question on one. Would this not be the same as just saying cosine x equals 1.5? Like if I put in cosine x equals 1.5, it wouldn't be the same way. No, these don't cancel because they're different. That's a horizontal op operation, that's a vertical. So they're different kinds of transformations. Yeah. And if you just graph this, something else, a whole other problem would happen. How high does cosine normally go? One. So one, it would never reach 1.5, that would be a no solution. And if you try to take the inverse cosine of 1.5, you would get no solution. All right, a um, little more complicated because now we've got a trig function equaling a trig function. So we're looking where two trig functions cross. This can start to get a little hard to do by hand. All right. There are some that we can do depending if they fit a certain pattern. Um, off the top of my head, I'd have to think about that one. I'm not sure. But graphically, it's the same approach. So we've got three cosine. Actually, I already have it in there. 3 cosine 0.5x, 
and 2 sine x. So now we've got two waves. Those could cross each other, it's hard to say, different amounts of times. Let's just look at it and see. So there's your, there's the left. I think we might get three. Uh, yep, just barely. So that's something you got to look at closely just to get all three. Is there any question on how you would get all three if I do it? Go on a test, everyone would feel okay with that one? Okay. So you just write all three. All right, um, so last one, um, what's different about this? It's an inequality. It's an inequality, so my answer is not going to just be like a single number. It's going to be it's going to be an integral. All right. So we've got two cosine x and negative one point three, and they want it from zero to two pi. So we're looking for where the wave is above the horizontal. Okay. How many? Um, how many sections is the wave above the horizontal? Two. Two. Let's move this here for a second. From here to here, and from here to here. So, what's my what's my first step? Find it. find all the intersects. Yeah. So second calc intersect. Actually, press intersect. All right, I'm just going to go a little bit to the left, and that should give me the one on the left. Um, 2.28. And I think these are centered around pi. So if you took that number minus pi, that's the difference. Add that to 3.14, and that's probably the other number. But there's no reason to try to be fancy. You know, just do second calc intersect again. This time, just make sure your guess is a little closer there. All right, 4.00. So, what is my first interval where I am? Is that greater than or greater than or equal? Just greater than. Where I'm greater than negative 1.3. So, parentheses 0 to bracket 2 point or 2.28. So I agree with 0 to 2.28. And you said parenthesis there? How come? Um, because I'm trying to think. I know it should be a parenthesis, but I can't say why. I feel like it should be a parenthesis. What are we doing? Well, whatever you put here. I mean, I guess, yeah. It's going to come here, from so that. Then, okay, so we'll be a bracket. That would be a bracket. You can include 0 as part of your interval. Now, whatever you put here. Is going to come from that. So, so parenthesis. Or, um, what's the next? Where's my interval pick up again? Four. Picks up at four. Can I include four? I cannot include it because that's where they're equal. And where does my interval end? Two pi. In this particular graph, they had me end at two pi. Can I include two pi? Yes. yes. No. <laughs> no. Usually, when we graph something on the screen, if you include the left edge of your screen, you don't also include the right edge. Think about if you had a graph from 0 to 360. If you include 0 and you include 360, it's like you're, you're overlapping a little bit. So if you include 0, don't include 360 as well, because they're the same thing. Mm -hmm. So you got you got why you used a parentheses for four because of it says x is greater than yeah. Okay. Yep. And the bracket on zero because I can equal zero in my interval. Yep. Parenthesis on two pi because I can't equal two pi in my interval. Usually an interval is only equal on one end, not not both. Usually. Right. That's, that's pretty much it. Any um, questions on that? Okay, so things on the 
Katz. I'm definitely going to ask you to graph one of each transformation. <coughs> I'll go over the uh, you know stuff about the take home, like when it's due and all that stuff. Um, take home. All right. So as far as the material, um, graphing. We only did one section this week, six three. Okay. So graphing. You want to know how to graph individual transformations and a multi-step problem. Um, under graphing, you need to know how to make the table and the picture. So I'm going to be looking for both. Um, what else? You should know how to find amplitude and period without a graph. Okay? Find the amplitude of a function, find the period of a function. Um, what else? Okay, and the rest is all solving uh, problems on the calculator. So solve trig equations on calc. That's what's on the test. Any, uh, and it's four, yeah, 14 questions, okay. which, I mean, for one section, it's, that's, I mean, we normally have 14 or 15 questions on like a, a whole week, so, and that's usually more than one section, so you really have to make sure you know everything in the section. There's nothing, everything that I taught you is, is on the test. Okay, so any questions on the material? Okay, so. Tomorrow we have class, it's period three, which is really, that 10 o'clock? No, 9.15 to 10 o'clock. So it starts at 9.15 and it's like 9.57. All right, <coughs> test is due at 9.15, you know, whenever we come into class, I think the bell rings at 9.13, so test is due at 9.15. I'll, I'll even just say, I'll make it simple, say 920. 920 on 1127. Okay. Make sure you give it directly to me. Don't put it under the door, don't leave it with someone else, make sure you give it directly to me. Um, if you are absent, still do. By deadline. You could email it. Yep, still due by the, by the deadline of 9.20 a.m. so clear. Um, if you are absent, it is still due by the deadline. Okay? If you take it, I'll mention about if you're going to be absent and you don't think you're going to have email or something. We'll, we'll talk about that. Okay. Um, so late test equals zero. zero. Um, question? If you don't think you can get it to me by email because you know you're going to be absent, that's fine. You can take the test later and have the same amount of time as somebody else. So you could take the test home on Monday and it would be due Tuesday. Or you could take the test home on Wednesday and it would be due Thursday. If you pick it up Thursday at one o'clock, it would be due Friday at one o'clock. Basically 20, 20, as close to 24 hours as I can get you. I know today you're getting it at like 11.45 and it's due at 9.15. So technically you're, you have 22-ish hours. Yeah. Since I was like, since I was here yesterday, I don't know a lot of this stuff. I like uh, yeah, take it home like tomorrow and then email you at 9:20 Thursday. Uh, no, it's gonna be during school day. Yeah, it's gonna be during school day. So if you want to take it, you can grab it Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday. So that way you can give it to me Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday. Um, if um, so, yeah, if you aren't gonna be here. 
that's your option for that. If you prefer to take it in class, you don't want to do it as a take home, that's fine too. Okay, you can take it in class. Um, we'll just have to figure out a time when we have a full class that you could do it. All right. So, are there any questions on that? Okay, perfect.